guys live action what up i know i'm late y'all i see y'all already commenting what is up dr pine here and today we're talking about getting into medical school with no mcat and there happens to be a top program that's going to let you guys do it we're going to talk about it who's excited who's applying this year welcome we're live let's get out of y'all but stop making excuses stop whining stop right get at it no excuses just dominate Alright, hello everybody. We see some regulars on here. Armand, Kasim. I see one tall girl is on here. I always see <laughs> Harpreet. Uh, Mike, what's up? Okay, so Antonio's on here. Alright, so we're talking about getting to medical school without the MCAT. This is a crazy COVID year. We all understand that. And I've been saying that things are subject to change. Don't count on any one thing. But there's going to have to be accommodations made because this is not a typical cycle. From an administrative standpoint, from a student standpoint, from an MCAT standpoint, from an application, transcript processing, letter of recommendation getting, from no way is this a normal cycle. Hello, Candace. Hello. Abdi, first time. All right, what up? Dev, hello. Uh, Phil Mon, been a while. What's up? So, this cycle, the gift that keeps on giving and taking away, if you guys have not heard, there are some schools out here which do not require the MCAT this cycle. Yes. There are more schools who are saying, listen, we'll delay, we'll allow your application to come on through, we'll consider you, and we'll wait for your MCAT to come whenever it may come, hopefully by October is what a lot of schools are saying. However, there are some schools that are not requiring it, and in this video, we're going to talk about the supreme leader, my favorite medical school, I don't know, maybe I'm biased, but Stanford Medical School has announced that they will not require an MCAT score for this 2021 cycle. So if you're applying this summer, 2020, getting in 2021, they will not require the MCAT. And a lot of people are yelling out, hooray, this is the best news ever. But it's a case of the rich getting richer. In the sense that for many of you guys, you think, oh, this is awesome. I've been struggling with the MCAT. I'm going to be able to go ahead and apply to Stanford and not have them judge me on my MCAT. This is incredible. This is a huge break. It's going to make it easy for me to get in the cycle. And you may be wrong. And I say that because this is an incredible opportunity for those of you, right, who I said the rich get richer, for those of you who have done the work during your pre-med journey, during your pre-med journey, and you have built a stellar resume, this is your chance to take advantage and to win because of that. This is your opportunity. This is your chance. If you've developed a strong undergrad GPA, and we have to start there when we talk about a pre-med resume. It is honestly, it's like the number one question I get. How do I improve my GPA? How do I improve my GPA? How many of you guys out there got low GPAs, right? And you're worried about it, right? You're worried how many schools are going to look at your low GPA. And so you're banking on a super high MCAT score. And it's the hardest thing to do is for students to develop and to get that high competitive GPA. So for those of you who have done that, who have solidified that GPA, way to go. And it's great that that's high because the MCAT and the GPA are the two components that comprise your academic aptitude. So I break medical school admissions into seven domains. The first and most important is the academic aptitude domain, which is composed of your MCAT score and your GPA. And it's your ability to show medical schools, hey, I'm ready to take your classes. Hey, I'm ready to pass your board exams. That's how you do it with the MCAT with your GPA. And right, you can argue which one's heavier weighted and all those formulas you put out. But the important thing to know is both of those things are important and they are the most important because that is a first cut point that many med schools make. So when they talk about holistic review, a lot of times that holistic review doesn't happen until after the numbers are right. In this case, right, if you've already built a tremendous GPA and you apply to Stanford, they're not going to have questions about your academic ability. So you are in a great spot because you've worked hard for four plus years, built this GPA, and now you're ready to apply and you get off the hook. You can stop your MCAT setting right now and apply, right, and be in a good position. It's great, but you should only use this policy, right? <laughs> if you've only, you should only use this policy if you've done the work and you don't have academic question marks. So before all of you guys go submit your application, ask yourself, if I was a medical school, would I want to see more academic competence, right? If you were counting on the MCAT to get you into medical school, this is not an option to say, oh, I'm not going to take the MCAT, I'll be in a great spot because your 3.1 GPA will be concerning to Stanford and they won't accept you. So you can only take advantage of this if you've done the work academically to be competent. 
Does this make sense to everybody right now, right here, right now, right? The other thing that I want to add is that even though, right, Stanford is letting you apply without an MCAT, and there are other schools that are also going to let you do this, and they're, you're going to hear about these in a second here, okay? I want to say that it's it's awesome, and it, it just really reflects, I, I constantly say, right, you guys know I'm a Stanford Med School alumni, I graduated from Stanford, I'm Stanford trained MD, and I am always saying how amazing Stanford is because they have foresight, guys. They're forward thinking. They're thinking about the future. They're thinking about their students and they are compassionate. And in this COVID cycle, it's amazing to me how rude <laughs> AMCAS and how rude, right? Double AMC, how rude they have been with you guys and forcing you guys into a very stressful, what is already a stressful, crazy year, into being more stressed simply because of their lack of flexibility and their lack of willingness to be real about what's going on, right? And they they always are encouraging you guys as students to be real about your candidacy, right? And reveal everything. Well, then be honest with us and let us know that, hey, you guys are backed up. Don't tell us you're gonna process everything in two weeks when it's taking you six and eight weeks to process stuff because that puts undue burden on you guys. And so I just, I think it's awesome that Stanford is taking the time to say, you know what, let's be real, let's be honest. This is cycles a mess. <laughs> let's help the students out. And let's say, listen, if you're a strong candidate, if you got yourself together, forget stress about the MCAT. Come on in here and get some of this stand for goodness. Take advantage of it. For those of you who are worried about your GPA and you're banking on your MCAT and your MCAT prep isn't going as well as you would like, the first thing I'll say is check out the description box below and get into my MCAT webinar to improve your MCAT prep. The second thing I'll say is, is this cycle is strange. It is weird. So don't be scared to push your MCAT back to July, to August, even to September. That's cutting it a little close, but if you apply with an August MCAT, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay because these schools don't have the administrative capacity. They're not on campus. <laughs> they don't have the logistical stuff set up to deal with this crisis. As you guys just saw, right? Didn't it just happen? You got, I don't know about you guys, your states, but California, I'm in California. We just got the lockdown order. Our bars are closed. And that's the sign, right? When the bars go, a lot of stuff is next. And so we're going to start retreating back into the social distancing mode. So things are not going to be smooth sailing from here on out. I wouldn't be surprised if MCAT test dates start getting canceled. And so we start to see a lot more schools announce the same policy. So the point for you guys is get it together, pull it together, figure out where you're at, be real and honest about your candidacy, and start making moves because you might be able to apply without your MCAT or a delayed MCAT, which means you can sneak into the cycle. And the reason I'm doing this video, because I just talked about, I was just doing a coaching session uh, on the phone with a student. I was driving home from work, talking on the phone with my students. And she is a student who's got a tremendous GPA, 3.8, right? And she's worked hard. She's learned how to study for my five pillars course, has done well. She's built up an incredible resume, right? She's a non-traditional student, has been taking this time to work and build up a resume and explore the things that she likes to explore, right? She's really into mental uh, health and mental wellness. So she's been exploring all that stuff. And now she's ready to apply, and the only thing she's waiting on is an MCAT. And so she's been studying for MCAT. She has a September MCAT test date, and we were talking to them, like, listen, you're such a stellar candidate. Scrap the MCAT. Put your application together. I think you have a good shot of getting into Stanford. And even if you don't, right, you submit one school. You see how it goes. You submit other schools as they start announcing that they're going to not require the MCAT. And then if you doesn't happen, you can still take your MCAT and use it next cycle. But for you guys who have been waiting and like, ooh, what's going to go? This might be a, 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 something to think about. Or like, ooh, I don't need the MCAT, and I'm strong. I'm going to go ahead and apply. Right? Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So I'm so excited. Stanford's awesome. And not requiring the MCAT is awesome. Uh, 3.4 would be concerning for Stanford. Yes. So it's not out of the realm, but uh, you'd have to have very strong things elsewhere in your application. Yeah, if you've already taken the MCAT and you have an old MCAT score, they're going to judge you on that. So I'm sorry. You're kind of out of luck there, right? <laughs> like I said, it's a tell of the rich getting richer. Rich getting richer. Uh, yeah, my email. Kipton, you have my email. How do you not have my email? You're in like 15 of my courses, Kipton. I don't understand how you don't have my email address. My email, guys, if you guys want to reach out to me, it's inquiries, I-N-Q-U-I-R-I-E-S, at studenttransformation.com. The easiest way to get a hold of me, guys, is to go to my website, studenttransformation.com, go to the contact page, and you can email me directly from there. You can message me. So get to my website, studenttransformation.com, send me a message. I appreciate you guys having on here with me live today. I don't want to take up all your day. I just wanted to inform you guys about this. This is breaking news. This is important for you guys to cycle. This is not going to be the first school. There are a couple others that I know about. They haven't announced yet. I'm not going to tell you guys yet, 
but there are some other big dog top five programs that are going to announce they're going to waive the MCAT for the cycle. So be prepared because it's going to happen. And as we start going into lockdown, you're going to see a ton of schools that are going to waive the MCAT for the cycle. They're going to supersede AMCAS and the AAMC. So I'm very excited uh, for you guys. Very excited. All right. Uh, anyway, all right. You guys know. Some of you guys, right? Abdi, it's your first time here. Make sure. We're going to be going live. I'm going to try to go live once a week-ish in addition to uploading new videos every Monday and every Wednesday. So this is Monday. You're getting a new video Wednesday. So be on there. It's at the study doc on all social media platforms. So go tune in. Make sure you guys tune in here. You subscribe. Turn on live notifications. If you're catching this, guys, I have, I have two podcasts. I have the Dominate Pre-Med Show. That's this. I have the Student Transformation Show where we talk studying and student efficiency. Get over there and check out those podcasts. If you're listening on the podcast, well, hello. Subscribe to the podcast. Thank you guys so much. All right. Everyone, have a wonderful day. How do we always end? How do we always end? No excuses. Just dominate, guys. I'll see you next time. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future in your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better?